Hello, this is Mark Larochelle from Productive Computing and Productive Computing University. Thanks for joining us on this video. We wanted to take a moment and provide you with an excerpt from a course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced One. This is a third installment in a series of courses that we provide at Productive Computing University. These courses are specifically designed to train you, the FileMaker developer. We start with the first course, which is called Beginner where we literally start from scratch with a blank file and we build that file together while we learn the concepts and the theories that go along with developing a professional FileMaker database solution. Then we go on to the intermediate course. Things get a little bit more advanced. We learn about scripting and the basic relationships and our file continues to take shape and get more advanced. In this third course, Advanced One, we take everything up a notch. We talk extensively about the various relationships that you might come across as a professional developer. We go deeper with scripting, subscripts, variables, global fields, and you'll come across these concepts on a regular basis as your development skills continue to grow. We also go into great depth on how to protect the file from a security standpoint in preparation for publishing it and sharing it with others. Okay, now for the lesson excerpt. In this lesson, we talk about the script debugger and the data viewer. Back into the PCU Gaming Company file, I think a good script to debug would be one found in invoices. So let's go to invoices and we'll focus on this view PDF. So turning on the script debugger is easy. Just go to the tools and make sure script debugger is active. If you don't have this option or the tools option, it's likely because you haven't turned on your advanced preferences. So within FileMaker, you want to target the settings and make sure you're using Use Advanced Tools. Select that, push OK, quit FileMaker, come back in. The Tools menu will be available along with all these additional options. When it's time to get serious about development, you'll need these tool options here, most notably the Script Debugger, which is what we're talking about in this lesson. OK, let's turn on Script Debugger. So I'll go to Tools and select Script Debugger. And there are several controls to be aware of. You have the edit option, which allows you to edit a script that you're currently debugging. This plays the script. It will continue on until it reaches a breakpoint, or it's told to pause on error. But in any case, this will run the entire script, including subscripts. Then this is the halt script. This will stop the script immediately where it stands, and it will not continue with any additional script steps. And I can hover over any of these to see the tooltip. This is the step over function. And notice that it's triggerable by the F5 key, controller key above your keyboard there. So step over. Let's go take a look at the Claris help file, what it says about this. Step over will execute the script one step at a time without entering subscripts. And that's what it means by stepping over. It means stepping over the subscripts. And a subscript is simply another script you call from within the main script. So you could have a script that says create a new contact, but then you could have a subscript that says record a log file for every new contact created. And that would be a subscript. If the script step is perform script, the script debugger will execute the subscript and proceed to the next line of the calling script. So even though it's step over, it just means that the debugger is gonna step over the script, but the subscript itself will in fact run. So that's a really key thing to understand about the step over option. Here again, it says the script debugger will execute all subscript steps until it encounters a breakpoint. Okay, so the next option here is called step into. And this one will execute the script one step at a time, as well as enter and show steps in subscripts. So most of the time you'll be using the step into option if you want to analyze every script step one by one. The step into is the one that I use most often because generally speaking, that's exactly what you want to do. You want to analyze every script step and make sure it's all working properly. If the script step is perform script, calling a subscript, the script debugger will step to the first line of the subscript and wait for user input before proceeding to the next subscript step. So in other words, it'll go step by step through the main script and any subscripts that it calls. This option here, which shows an arrow up, is the step out. Similar to step in, step out will execute all script steps in the current script. And if the script is a subscript, return to the line after the perform script in the calling script. 
If the script is not a subscript, the step out command will cause script debugger to execute all remaining script and subscript steps until it encounters a breakpoint. So the best way to describe this is let's just say you're debugging a script and it's calling a subscript. So I'm going to use the step into. So each and every line of my script is being debugged. It gets to a perform script step, which calls a subscript. That subscript will then go line by line by line. I realize that I have 20 more subscript lines to go and I don't need to analyze them. I can push the step out. That will execute the remaining subscript steps and pop me back into the main script and wait. And that's what it says right here. If the script is a subscript, return to the line after the perform script step in the calling script. In other words, it'll continue where it left off in the main script. If, however, I'm on the outermost layer of my debugging, in other words, I'm in the main script and I'm not in a subscript, stepping out at that point has the same behavior as this, which is to continue. Okay, the next option here is a really important one and one that's often overlooked, set next step. This allows you to, no matter where you are in the process, to click on a script step and have the script automatically start from where you click. It resets the pointer and allows you to rerun part of the script without having to exit the whole thing, go back to the beginning and click the button again. Down here, you have an option to pause on error. This simply pauses the script debugger if it encounters any error. Here, it will list the error, if any. And here is the call stack, which tells you where you are and what script you're currently in the middle of. It'll stack based on the script and the subscripts that are called in order, and you'll just follow along to see where you are in the process. Over here on the right, we have an option to disable the script triggers. A lot of times the script triggers are not what you want to analyze in the middle of analyzing a major script. Script triggers are separate scripts that might trigger based on a condition. Oftentimes as developers, you don't want to be bothered with the script triggers while trying to debug the main script. So that option is there for you to either enable or disable this option. And then over here on the right, you have open the data viewer, which we'll talk about here in just a second. Below that, we have an icon here indicating whether my script is authorized to run or not. If you currently happen to be logged in as a user that doesn't have full access or access enough to debug a script, this lock, this lock, icon, this lock icon will appear. You can click on it. It will prompt you for credentials and you can put in your credentials and debug the script as an administrator. Okay, that's it. So while we're here, I will open up the data viewer and we'll talk briefly about data viewer. Data viewer has two main sections. It's got a current section, which you have no direct control over here. It's just a running list of any variables or any fields that are used on a script and what their current values are. It's more of a reference sheet than anything else. You do have an option to add to the watch window, which is the second part of the data viewer. The watch window allows you to build your own expressions. If you were to build your own expression, you can just click down here, add expression. And this brings up a very familiar dialog box, which looks just like the calculation engine dialog box. In fact, it's got a lot of the same features and pro properties. So if you already know the dialog box for calculations, you already know this edit expression dialog box. Here are a list of fields. I can categorize by table occurrence. I have a quick filter. So if I want to identify a particular field to look at or analyze, I can analyze the date here. Once I bring it over to my expression, it will return the result. This is a great way to build your calculations and expressions outside of the script or outside of actually having to make a calculation field. Consider it a playground or a working sandbox for expressions and calculations you need to create or a way to see the current value of things while a script is running. Up here, you have the help for the data viewer. So if you want to read more about that in great detail, you can do that here. Over here, we have another panel which shows all the functions. And this works just like the calculation dialog box, as I already mentioned. You have a quick search here for a specific function. So if I want to see something to do with average, I can do that here. And I can put that function within my expression and add it here at any time. I can filter by type here. And when I select a function, it gives me a brief description. And best of all, it allows me to click on this question mark, which brings me to the online help for that function, which I still use today 
all the time. What I love about the help at Claris is they tell you briefly what it does, some things to be aware of, the parameters it takes, the version that this originated from. So if you're doing some backwards compatibility programming, you can be sure that this function is supported by the users that might be using a slightly older version of Claris FileMaker. A description, some notes, and oftentimes good examples to get you started with how a function might operate. Then below that, it, it generally has some cross-referenced items that you can also research related to this particular function. There are many, many functions here in the world of the Claris platform. A lot of them are standardized. If you are really good at Excel, for example, and you're used to summing things in Excel, you have a sum function here in FileMaker as well, and they work very similarly in theory. So a lot of this is just basic mathematics, and the functions are created both to do math, other advanced calculations. There's a whole series of get functions here, as you can see, to get the current status and conditions based on your system and the user logged in. And this is a great way to really learn functions. Just spend a lot of time here in the data viewer, have some fun, experiment. You'll learn a ton of stuff. So that's the data viewer. Another way to get to the data viewer is directly under the tools menu. And also note that the data viewer persists on top of everything else, which is exactly what you want. Both the data viewer and the debugger will sit on top of a script. That concludes part one. Join me in part two, where we actually debug the script and do some light analysis with our data viewer. Well, I hope you enjoyed that lesson extract from the course called Claris FileMaker Pro Advanced 1. To find out more, go to ProductiveComputingUniversity.com, where you can enroll in this course along with many others training you on the Claris platform. If you are interested in taking multiple courses, it might make sense to invest in the Productive Computing University bundle package, which is one yearly price to gain access to the entire university library. As always, thanks for joining us on this video. Feel free to like and subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.